in particular, uh, Professor Assad, with whom I, I have a good conversation here in Trieste at the beginning of this year, and whose suggestions uh, have have, uh, have been very useful to me uh, with my work. And then uh, in this talk, I will I will discuss a little bit about uh, some recent results that we have obtained for the Herbert Holistin Hamiltonian, in particular for different types of two-dimensional systems. Um, I divide my presentation this way, where first I will, I will present a very brief introduction about the issue, uh, and then I will present the model and the methodology. Actually, the methodology will be very quick because it's basically an uh, auxiliary field, and all of you now are experts on it. And uh, after, all, after that, I will present my results and some outlooks. Okay, so let's go to the introduction. First of all, uh, it's it's very well known that the electron phone interaction is something very important for us since the, for instance, the BCS theory with the explanation of the conventional superconductivity, but it's also very important for charge modulation. And the first one that, that uh, notes this was Pyers uh, in the 60s, I believe, that he, uh, he, he, he provided one explanation for charge modulation based on electron phone interaction. So I will just uh, remember you what Pyers said. So according to Pyers, you, the receipt for charge modulation is basically true. You have to have a firm surface nesting and you have to have um, uh, you, you have to put on some electronic instability, and then if you do that, you create one, one, one metal insulator transition. In other words, you create a gap in your firm level, and then you you create a softening in the phonon, like a cone anomaly, and you also create one kind of less less distortion. And the reason for it is very simple. Is it comes from linear response theory. Is, I will not go into details through it, but basically, if you calculate the electronic susceptibility, if you have a firm surface nesting, it, you have a divergence on it. So basically, your system is very susceptible for any external interaction, external perturbation, sorry. And basically, if you have this kind of systems and you put uh, one electron phone interaction, Again, you can do this. this is a very similar uh, argument. This is an RPA argument. So uh, you can show that if your if your susceptibility diverges, uh, you have a, a, a charge modulation for any electron phone coupling. Actually, this is the same argument. You can you can look at, for instance, for the paper from Hirsch, the famous papers from the eighties. This is the same argument for. Uh, uh, antiferromagnetism uh, in, in this kind of systems. So basically, uh, this, this is the Pyers argument, and it happens in, in nature, obviously. So for, for, for example, for this kind of systems here, uh, the um, uh, organic systems is basically a, a two, couple, two weekly couple chains. They have the, they they have this kind of modulations when you lower the temperature, so they create this this charge dense wave uh, modulation, and the, the the wave vector for the CDW is exactly two key two the two times the Fermi vector, and you have this kind of cone anomaly and elect and metal insulator transitions and everything that that's required by Pyers. Okay, so that's fine. It it really happens in nature. But what happens is that some other types of novel materials, like for instance, not a novel one, but a, a transition metal to calcogenides, for instance, they don't, they, don't, they don't have this kind of behavior. For instance, this, this niobium selenate, uh, it doesn't present any kind of instability in the, uh, in the uh, any kind of divergence, sorry, in the susceptibility, it doesn't have uh, any, any kind of firm surface nesting, and it doesn't present metal insulator transition, even though it has charge modulation. And so this, this is not a Pyers-like material. So the, the, the common belief for this kind of material is that from, from uh, electron phonocoupling measurements by the uh, phonon line with 
they, they, they see a very large electron form coupling for exactly the same uh, uh, wave vector that gives the CDW. So they believe that uh, you have a momentum dependent strong electron form coupling in this kind of systems, but it's not like, it's not a conventional type. So even for this kind of system that you have strong electron form coupling, it's someone needs to understand better the nature of the charge dense wave. When you go to cube rates, for instance, the cube rates are probably the, the paradigm in, in strong, strongly correlated systems. Cube rates is even more uh, complicated because we know for, for, for a long time that this kind of L, LBCO uh, rates, you have charge modulation. So this is the, the, the energy scales of the charge modulation also in the YBCO, but you don't know the, 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 the origin of this kind of, the nature of this charge modulation. Uh, many people believe that it can it can comes from from the electron like electro interactions. This is the reason that many people work with uh, extended Hubble model. But either the 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 electron form interaction is important or not. It, it, it's 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 important to to try to understand if if uh, if there is some effects of electron form interaction. But even though one thing that's pretty well known in cube rates is that the there is one uh, Fermi velocity renormalization, uh, for instance, for this uh, for, for for this kind of of system here, exactly at the phonon energy of, of, of at the energy of the phonon fields. So this kind of kink in the ARPS uh, measurements is is due to the electron form coupling. So even for cube rates, a material that is known for their uh, strong electron like interaction, phonon, the electron form coupling is important. Okay, so finally, just finishing this part of experimental motivation, we have the graphene. Graphene is a worldwide known weakly coupling material, but recently, uh, some some works have have uh, tried to, for instance, to 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 merge two kind of methodologies like Abinitio and strongly correlated systems or, uh, methodology. Sorry, and they have tried to extract the the, the interactions in the in the in graphene, doing a kind of a mapping between realistic systems to effective models. And what they see is that graphene is not that weakly electronic interacting problem. Uh, but the point is that what happens is that the effective U that they, they find this U here is below the critical point for the metal insulator transition that people obtain for, for, for the honeycombs, let's see. So this is the reason that we see it like, like it being a semi-metal system. But the point is that we know as well that in graphene, electron phonon interaction is important. And for all of this kind of mapping, they disregard electron phonon interaction. And probably the most known example of uh, electron phonon importance in graphene is in the bilayer that we have superconductivity and everybody now knows that this could be because of the uh, electron phonon coupling. So the, the, the picture that emerged, emerged from, from this discussion is basically that we need to know what are the effects of the electron phonon interaction leads in, in, in strongly correlated system. In particular, for the occurrence of long range order, like antiferromagnetism, charge ordering, superconductivity and, and, and so on. But the point is that most of the electron phonon interacting models that are presented in literature, most of them are for one dimensional systems and the ones that are doing in higher dimensions are uh, use based methodologies, which could lead to not, uh, we could lead to not so exactly result. It could lead to, to some misleading results. So we need to have uh, 
uh, one analysis from unbiased methodologies. And here, what I do is uh, basically one analysis of one uh, effective Let's Hamiltonian that takes into account electron lecture and electron form interaction on the same footing uh, using, using the auxiliary field uh, quantum motor coral simulation. So uh, here I use both uh, zero temperature and finite temperature. I will discuss it later. Okay, so let's discuss the model. So here, uh, basically what I do is uh, in a pictorial view is I have my let's see and with my ions, my sites, and then I put in each site one, uh, uh, one, phon one phonon degree of feed, uh, one, one phonon degree of freedom, like, like harmonic oscillators. And I have electrons, these electrons can hop from one side to the other. And, um, and uh, they can interact with, with the phonons, but I pay a price if the electrons are together. So basically I have one Hubble repulsion and I have also electron phone interaction. So the Hamiltonian is, is this one here with the hopping term plus the uh, harmonic oscillators term and the electron phone and the Hubble term. So this is a complicated Hamiltonian to work with. And basically uh, I, 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 I use, I, I will present later what I do. So sorry. I, um, in order to analyze this Hamiltonian, I have to, to define some quantities. And some quantities of interest to me are the density structure factor defined here, the spin structure factor. And from this two here, I can, I can obtain the correlation ratio. The correlation ratio, this uh, quantity here is something similar to the Binder cumulants. We can discuss it later if you want, but it, it, the crossing of this, this quantity with the let size can give me uh, so, uh, the critical point. Um, uh, other things that we are interested in here is uh, the, the susceptibility, the pair susceptibility, basically if I have or not superconductivity. And here I, I, we analyze the uh, the S wave, many types of S wave, like on site and, and, and uh, different sites, uh, non local S wave uh, uh, susceptibilities, and also the D wave. And finally, you have to define some parameters. The first parameter to define is the, um, is the uh, diabaticity ratio, that's basically the, the frequency of the phonons. And also the 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 energy, the energy scales for the interaction. So like the, the, the this lambda here that comes from uh, the one, one perturbation theory. That's basically is the the polaron uh, energy the, the the formation of polarons. The the, the energy scales for uh, polaron formation. Sorry. And we also define this effective U that's basically a parameter. It, it, it doesn't mean that I work with this effective U. This effective U to me is, is basically a parameter to divide the phase diagram like we, you will see later. And everything I will present to you now is at half feeding. So it's, it's one electron per, uh, per site. So about the methodology, as I told you, uh, is a this is a difficult Hamiltonian to work with because uh, I have sign problem. So I use two types of methodologies here. Uh, I use the finite temperature determinant quantum Monte Carlo. It's basically finite temperature auxiliary field. I will not discuss the details here because you, you, you are now experts. But the, pro the problem in here that I have to, to call your attention is that this B matrix, uh, the up and down are not equivalent. So I have minus sign problem, and then you know that minus sign problem is horrible. So I have minus sign problem even at half feeding. And the, the, the average sign depends on the size of the, the, size of the system, the, on temperature, interaction, strength, and so on. So this is a problem for us. Otherwise, um, on the other hand, sorry, uh, I also work with the projective zero temperature auxiliary field. And I also will not discuss the details, but the point is that doing one argument very similar to this one that Professor Assad presented for long range Coulomb interaction. Here we can work with uh, complex fields and, and we can integrate out the phonons and then we can, we, we can develop one sign free uh, code. 
The problem is that design-free code works just for this effective view, like, as I told you, this is a parameter important, works just, just to this effective view larger or equal zero. So if it's, if it's below zero, it's, you have a very severe sign, minus sign problem. Uh, you can see the details about the implementation in this paper here from Caracuso and Sorella. And also we, we have here implemented, uh, this is something quite nice, is we have implemented one inversion sampling algorithm for, for single moves. This is probably the best, uh, the best uh, single move uh, sampling that one can, can establish. Okay, so we can discuss it later if you want as well. So basically I divide my, my phase diagram like that. So I have, I have uh, for plus for, for, for positive effective view, I will do uh, projective auxiliary field. And for negative effective view, I will do uh, quantum Monte Carlo, determinant quantum Monte Carlo simulations, finite temperature. And we project it on the ground state basically uh, doing that. Okay, good. So let's present the results. Starting first with the square let's see. So before I present, I just remind you that the square lattice has the has Fermi surface nesting and has a Van Hoff singularity, both that leads to logarithmic divergence on the on the uh, electronic susceptibility. So here we expect that we could have both CDW and anti-ferromagnet instability. So we don't know which one we win. So it's when you put both. Uh, electron electron and electron phone interactions. What happens is for the pure Huber holistic model for U equals zero, as I told you, if you have a perfect nesting, probably you, you should have one, one char charge ordering for any electron phone coupling. But for 1D, uh, it's a result that uh, is, is known for a long time from D DMRG. It's, it's known that the quantum fluctuations destroys this long range order. And then you have a finite, uh, we have a metal insulator transition for a finite electron phone coupling. You can see one read this discussion in one review paper. So for 1D problem, it, it's, it's very well known. The problem is about the 2D. What happens in the square lets? I, I, I'm starting just with the U equals zero case, the pure holist model, if the, the, the the existence or not of a metal insulator transition at a finite electron form of coupling. What happens is that for variational Monte Carlo, this, all, all of these are very recent papers. For, fin, for variational Monte Carlo, they present one, one result for uh, a finite electron form of coupling, like uh, giving you a, a metal insulator transitions, while some quantum Monte Carlo simulations present some uh, uh, suggests that it doesn't exist. So this is the first problem that we have. There is exist, exists or not exist one quantum critical point for a finite electron phone coupling for the pure holistic model. So we, we analyze it using the first of here, first the, the DQMC finite temperature method. And just to remind you as well for U equals zero, the pure holistic model doesn't have a uh, sign problem. So we could achieve very large lattices. And we analyze the crossing of this uh, correlation ratio uh, uh, quantity. And, we, and, and then we analyzing the crossing of this quantity, we, these are the points of the crossing, we could extrapolate it and see what happens in the, in the, in the ground state and in the thermodynamic limit. And what happens is basically doing both power law scaling or polynomial scaling, what you, you obtain is that you probably doesn't have uh, one electron, one finite electron phone coupling, uh, one critical point for a finite electron phone coupling. So uh, we repeat this, this same analysis for different uh, uh, critical, dynamic critical exponent. And for instance, for z equal two, we, we have even a better result for this point. We definitely doesn't have a finite critical electron form coupling for charge dense to wave uh, at two D at the square lattice. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. So now that we we 
we solve the same the, this first problem and let's let, let's work with the Hubbard holistic model indeed. Uh, and I will start with the most difficult problem. The most difficult problem is basically you do lambda equal u. In other words, you put the electron phonon coupling equal to the uh, electron electron interaction. And for this case, as I told you, you have both charge density wave and electromagnetism enhanced, so you don't know what will happen. So what we saw in our simulation is that charge density waves, charge charge correlation functions are suppressed while spin spin are enhanced in this case. And when we analyze again, but now using the sign free quantum Monte Carlo simulations, uh, when we analyze the correlation ratio for the antiferromagnetic case and, and, go, and getting the, the crossing points like we did before, this is and extrapolating by a, a polynomial fit, what we see is basically that we have a finite value of interaction that leads to one, an, one, one unordered phase to an antiferromagnetic phase along this line. So basically what we see is that the antiferromagnetism is, is stronger than the CDW phase when both are equal, uh, when both parameters are equal. Uh, we also repeat the same, the same uh, analysis for the Z equal to, the, the critical exponent equal to, and we have similar results, but with different critical points, but uh, not, not so different, but, uh, but a little bit different. Uh, so, but basically what we see is that probably we have a metal insulated transition. I will, I will come back to this point again. And, but, for, for, but certainly we have a, an antiferromagnet critical point and the spin fluctuations are much stronger than the charge, charge ones. Okay, so repeating the same analysis of the of the uh, correlation ratio for different values of lambda and u, we can get the phase diagram. And here, for instance, now for, for, for the GQMC, we have a sign problem and you can see the, the, the average sign here is, it starts to become very worse when they're bad when you, we have large lattice size, sizes, but not so bad for until 12 by 12. That's uh, uh, it's not that it's not that small lattice. And repeating the same analysis, for instance, for lambda equal to, we can see that, for instance, we really have one 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 region that we don't have neither antiferromagnetism nor CDW. So we really have a metal insulated transition that leads from CDW to metal or a metal to antiferromagnetism. And we have this phase that is not even antiferromagnetic or CDW. The point is that, is it a metal or, or is it a superconductor? This is a problem as well that we have to, to, to discuss. And this is the phase diagram of the, repeating the same analysis for many different other points. This is the phase diagram that we got. We have this, uh, the, 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 this, uh, this phase diagram here, but we cannot go beyond uh, these values of interactions because the sign problem starts to become very, very bad for, for uh, the DQMC. So then we just uh, present for small and intermediate values. And the point is that, um, is it a metal or is it a superconductor? Uh, we can analyze it, the, analyzing the, 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 uh, the, the pairing susceptibility. And uh, here we present the, 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 the results for, 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 for this quantity. And uh, I will skip some details, but basically uh, the one, one good quantity is you get the effective susceptibilities. Basically you take your susceptibility and you remove the, the couplet contribution, the, 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 the contribution uh, from uh, kind of non-interacting uh, particles. And if you have this positive, you really have an attractive channel. And here, analyzing it, we see that um, we have one enhancement just for one channel that is the, is the uh, one non-local S wave uh, function. So probably we could not go beyond this, this value of temperature because 
uh, we have sign problem. But probably if this has superconductivity, it should be S wave, not D wave, as some papers have have suggested. Okay, so these are my my partial conclusions. I will skip this, otherwise I don't have time to 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 present the, the, what I have to show you. So this paper is uh, now uh, uh, published in this in, in Nature Communications Physics. You can see the details there. And then let's move on and present my results for the honeycomb. Let's see. So just to remind you, the honeycomb has a completely different. Uh, uh, dispersion relation. It has Dirac fermions, so it ha it has one uh, vanishing density of states that have feeling, and so this vanishing density of states, from this vanishing density of states, we may expect that we, we could we should have a finite U for uh, antiferromagnetism, a finite lambda for CDW, and probably we sh we will suppress pairing, and F uh, this is no in fact uh, for uh, for for uh, antiferromagnetism, there is this very well known result of 3.8 done by Assad and collaborators and Sorel and collaborators as well. And for the pure Holstein model, it also is it, it's known uh, that you should have a finite lambda for CDW. This is one, this first one is a paper that I'm a co-author and this other one is a paper that Martin Hohenado is a co-author, someone that's, that you probably know. Uh, but the point is that, so let's again focus on the pure Holstein model. Here, these two results differ about the critical electron phonocoupling, and, and they differ because they have different adiabaticity ratios. So probably this quantum critical point here, this lambda, they, it should change when you shoot the adiabatic, the adiabatic situation. So this is the first problem that we will analyze. What happens with the, with the, with the critical electron form coupling when you change the adiabaticity ratio? And then again, repeating the same analysis of the correlation ratio, doing performance on power law or uh, polynomial uh, extrapolation, we can have the critical points. So in this in this plot here, I present the critical points for for the charge density wave for the pure Holstein model as a function of the adiabaticity ratio. So it seems that for very small lambda, it it, it, it goes to a, a point like uh, lambda equal 1.2. And, and as we increase the value of lambda, it should go to 3.8. That is basically the value of the attractive Hubble model. And one thing that's very interesting here is that uh, uh, it's, it's something that's not uh, taken into account for, for most of the problems that even for a large value of omega, we, for instance, omega equal eight, we are very far from the, from, from the, the, the attractive Hubble result. So uh, basically the true anti-adiabatic limit is, is just obtained for very, very large values of, it, of, of omega. Okay, so let's work with the, again, with the Hubble Holstein model in this case. So uh, repeating the same procedure for U equal lambda, uh, we can obtain one again, uh, one finite, uh, one, 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 one critical antiferromagnet critical point along this line U equal lambda. Uh, and so basically, uh, this is the same that happens in the square let's see. But the point is that here, this, this critical point varies very, very quickly with, with, lambda, with omega. Uh, for instance, going from five and to 12, varying just a little bit the omega. So it's very uh, susceptible to the, to, to, to the value of the adiabaticity ratio. And then uh, performing this, the, this, this analysis of the, 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 the correlation ratio, we can obtain the phase diagram for, the, for this uh, positive U part that's basically like that. So in, other, in other words, you have uh, for small omega, 
the, your critical point goes very quickly to this line, but the, uh, as, as you increase omega, your critical points are more and more close to this line in blue, that is the limit for the infinite, the infinite omega value. The same we can do for the, the finite temperature, for instance, here is one, one result that we can obtain. And repeating the same procedure, we can obtain the phase diagram for the Hubbard holistic module at the honeycomb labs. I'm, I'm finishing, sorry, I'm almost uh, over time. Uh, the point is that here we have a, a very bad sign problem for, for values of U larger than four or five. So we cannot obtain up, up, up to this value, but we can uh, expect that the, the this, this dashed line here can can be uh, can, can can describe the critical point. We can discuss it later if you want. The point is that this is the basic uh, the description of the the, the phase diagram uh, of the Hubbard Holmstrom model in, in the Hong Kong Let's see for a small lambda, you have a uh, quick transition for both. CDW or antiferromagnetism, but as you increase omega, the, you change these lines and it approaches to these two red lines here. Okay, I will just finish it, just comparing this phase diagram with two phase diagrams that we know in literature. The first one with the extended Hubbard model. If you look the phase diagram that we obtained with the phase diagram that people have obtained to the extended Hubbard model in the honeycomb, they are similar. But you have to take into account that here we cannot adjust the, 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 the critical points as a function of, of omega, of, 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 of the frequency. So there is no analogy between these two uh, cases when you take into account the adiabaticity ratio. So it, 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 it's similar, but very different. Um, you can also, uh, we can also compare with the long range interacting Hubble model, the one that Professor Assad had presented here. And okay, here it's much more similar indeed, because they, uh, the, adiabatic, the adiabaticity ratio here can be, uh, there is an, an direct analogous that is basically the, 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 how, how, how strong is your long range interaction. But there is one point that I should call your attention is that along this line, lambda they call you, uh, some papers have shown that you have uh, different types of U, like positive and negative U values of interactions. And this has no analogy with the Coulomb case, uh, unless you can uh, implement one long range interaction with positive and negative interaction at the same code that you, probably it's not possible because you have a sign problem. So again, you have also one, one difference between these two here. So basically is that, I, uh, I will skip this as well. Uh, this paper is not published yet, it's submitted for publication, but you can see the details in the archive. And there is some outlines basically uh, what happens if we go away from half feeling, in particular in the Hong Kong, because we probably en can enhance superconductivity, or what happens with frustration of with momentum dependent electron form coupling, or even spin orb interaction. So there is a, a large amount of open problems that you can that you, we can work with. I leave you with this very beautiful photo of Trieste and I invite you to come to CISA and give a seminar here as well. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I would suggest, because we'd like to have a picture uh, taken, I'd suggest that we leave the questions for after the picture. What do you think, Faka? You, you're determined. Mm, I think it makes sense because since you sent the email, maybe some people uh, are still here also for the picture or would come for the picture. So if you're too late with that, so they might think that it's already been taken. Okay, so, so then I, I stop sharing, right? Yes, thanks.